everybody, it's Eugene Lichaud and welcome to Click3D. This is the program where we talk about 3D scanners, photogrammetry, hardware, software, and every now and then we get to interview some pretty cool people who are doing some really good work in the 3D area. Today what I'm going to be doing is a quick demo on this new prototype scanner and this is a structure light scanner but it is dedicated to a specific application and that is footwear impressions. So it is an early model, it's a prototype, so I don't know what model number this is but it is uh, new. So uh, hey, it will probably change its form and factor and maybe some of its function, but nonetheless, I think it's kind of cool that we can do stuff like this and people send it to us to uh, do an early demo, you know, and no strings attached or anything like that. But um, let's get to this one and I'll show you how to set it up and how to get it going and what it does. Okay, so I have done some other videos on structured light scanners. And really when we talk about structured light scanners, what do we mean? Well, structured light really just means that we're doing something to the light so that we can interpret the position of 3D geometry. And sometimes you can use lasers, sometimes you can use white light, so just like a regular projector. And in fact, this one is a white light scanner, so you can visibly see what the pattern looks like. And a lot of these types of scanners are using fringe type patterns. So basically a series of dark, uh, dark and light colored stripes. And they have, you know, a lot of people have their own technology, different types of patterns and things like that. But it means that the very basic structure of a structured light scanner has to have a projector and a camera. So those are the two things that you need to have. And sometimes they will add multiple. So sometimes you'll have multiple projectors or multiple cameras and you know, just for some redundancy, for some additional accuracy or whatever that might be. So on the front face here, you know, I can see that there's some stuff going on here. So it looks like, you know, there might be like a camera or a projector and then a couple of lenses. So you have to be able to read the pattern somehow. And so that's what this pretty much is. Now, there is a panel on the back here. So this is a viewing panel. There's an on button here. There's some uh, cable connections here for power. So this is meant to be used in the field. So this is being meant to be used where you're going to recover some kind of a footwear impression or something outdoors, but it does need power at the moment. So that's kind of a limitation. Um, you'll need to supply an inverter or run a cable or something like that in order to get power to this thing. Uh, but again, it's a fairly large housing right now and it's not that heavy really but um, there's a lot of space here for cooling. So, you know, if this gets, I doubt it's gonna get all that hot. There seems to be a lot of space here and I expect that in the future, uh, this is gonna be reduced in size somewhat just because um, there just seems like there's just a lot of space in there to make it easy for manufacturing and for people to get inside and wiring and that sort of thing. Now there is a mount for a tripod here, um, but uh, what I'll do is I'll set this up and I'll show you uh, what's here and just talk about the uh, basic setup. Stand by. Okay, so if you are wondering what I have here, uh, I've just got this uh, wooden uh, frame box here with some sand inside of it and that's just for you know, allowing us to make some kind of an impression in sand. It's actually really dry and normally I would make it a lot more moist and it'll transfer a lot more of the pattern uh, from your shoe or from the tread pattern onto the sand. But no big deal, it is what it is. Uh, it's just a demonstration. Uh, the other thing I have is the actual scanner itself. So this is from VE Optics and it's pretty simple to put together. Like I said, there's a power cable that has to go in the side here. That's this right here. It does have to be plugged into 120 volts AC and there is a tripod adapter uh, underneath, but the idea here is that this is gonna be pointing down directly at the surface, okay? So um, if you imagine that there was a, a footwear impression here that we'll do right now, let's go ahead and do that. I'll just make an impression, nothing fancy. Okay, it's not great, but it's, it is what it is. The idea here is that it comes with a I guess you'd call this a quad pod, okay? So basically a tripod that's specifically made for this particular scanner. Now, the distance from the surface here to the lens is important. So the, the standoff distance or the distance to the object that you're scanning is important. So uh, these here, if I extend them fully, okay, I should be able to get the proper distance, okay? Now it is a little bit raised up here, so the sand is a little bit higher, but it should work. It should still be within the range uh, of the optimal 
uh, focus, let's say, for the, the cameras that are on here. So what I need to do is grab this and then put it down this way, okay? So you just put it down and then basically hook it up and then it would be pointing straight down. But because this is gonna be used outdoors, uh, this also comes with a little bit of a, a kind of skirt here. And what the idea here is, is that if it's really sunny outside, it makes it very difficult to see the structure light pattern in the sand. And so what this does is it comes over here on the tripod. It's got some cutouts for the uh, projector and for the camera and basically creates shade. So uh, that is what helps. And it's just nothing more than a sewn skirt like this. And let me see if I've got it the correct way. But basically, it would work something like, let's see if I get it correct, something like that. And there's little cutouts here for where you place them in. So you allow these little plastic brackets to point through and there you go. You got your little shaded uh, room here and then you take this and then you'd, you'd put it on top and that would go this way so it aligns with the uh, the cameras and the projector. Now, I'm not gonna use this because then you can't see the pattern underneath. So I'm gonna take this off, but I just want you to know that this is there as an option and it makes a lot of sense. And that's because on those bright sunny days, the sun causes all kinds of problems. So when it's a really bright surface or something like that, yeah, it's problematic. Okay, let's get this going here. I'm gonna put this in this way and it should fit just in between, kind of squared up here like that. That looks okay. Actually, I think it goes this way. Yeah, I'm gonna do it this way. Yeah, that fits much better. Okay, great. And now we're gonna plug this in. Okay, just plug that in here. All right. And now I need to plug this into the scanner. And that just gets plugged in on this side right here. Okay, let's make sure that I got this lined up properly. And yeah, right there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do actually now is I'm gonna set up this GoPro so that we might be able to catch the screen here because I think that would be interesting if you see what is on the screen. And I don't have a way to broadcast this um, through some other means so, or record it. So I'm gonna try to do it this way. So let's give it a go. Let's fire up this GoPro and see if it's gonna cooperate. Okay, now I am getting a little bit of a glare from the lights. So uh, it is what it is. Let's just see if I can fire this up now. So give it a second to come on board. It's actually pretty quick to uh, come online. And actually you can, see the, uh, you can see the pattern that's now being emitted down here. And so as this fires up, yeah, I'm getting some nasty glare there. But let's see what happens. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this on and this will fire up and then once it gets going, it's gonna to start to project a pattern down here and I'll try to get some shots of it uh, close up. But give this a second to fire up. There we go. Almost there. Okay, so we are at the interface. And the idea here is that it is pretty simple. So uh, a couple of options that are here. You have a low res mode and a high res mode. So low res is gonna capture a wider field of view. And so if I go to high res, okay, it basically, uh, I think it switches cameras is what it's doing. And then it uh, focuses in on the pattern. So uh, one projector, two cameras. And then this is the capture, so the uh, camera is where you'd actually do that. The auto exposure, if you click on that, it should adjust the exposure so you get a little bit brighter scan. And over here there's a slider, so you can actually get increased exposure and really lower decreased exposure. So I'll just hit the auto for now and just use the default. Okay, cool. There's also an HDR, so HDR will take uh, multiple images. I'm gonna turn that on. I think HDR is a great feature. Um, it always seems to help sometimes. Sometimes maybe there's not a, a, a big difference, but it seems to help. So um, I'll leave it like that. And actually, I'm gonna activate it here. I don't know why, there we go. I think that, it, that was already activated. Um, there is a USB function, so you can transfer the data that you capture on the device. It does store it on the device, and then you can transfer it to a USB. 
and then there's some help files and things like that. So this is the pattern down here and what I'll do is I'll take a high res uh, image of what I've got there. Again, it's nothing impressive, but there, there are some small details. So let me just go ahead and hit capture. So this is going to be the HDR capture and there you go. Um, it's there already. So uh, it saved it. So I'm just going to hit OK and you can move this around right on screen and you can see what it is that you have. So uh, you can zoom in, turn it around, kind of get a little uh, idea of what it is that is there in front of you. Okay, so there we go. So that's actually, let me go back, let me go to visibility, let me go to low res. Uh, I'm gonna go to low res, and I'm gonna do a capture here. Let's try it here. Okay, so this one here was the low res one. I did the high res one before, but you can see here there's a better outline of the overall impression, and you know, you get some color, you get some texture. So, you know, you can turn this, you can do some different things, get some previews, but um, you know, this is the general idea of what you've got, okay, like that. And then again, the high res, if I go back to uh, view, and then I go to high res. So that's gonna focus in on a, on a specific area. So uh, it's giving me a preview here. I'm just gonna increase this a bit to help me with the details. And I'm gonna move this over, something like that. So I can see part of the, the curvature there. And again, I can take a shot and I'll only get a small piece of this, but I will get it at higher resolution. So you can see part of the tread pattern there uh, for, this, uh, for this footwear impression. Okay, cool. So I don't want to go over this too much. This is the basic idea. There is a desktop application that is more or less just a viewer, but um, you know, the data, what you do with it afterwards is really up to you. But this is the basic premise of this VE optics scanner. Now I had the fortune to speak to Dr. Song Zhang, who is the uh, developer of this particular system and the technology that is behind it. And I'm going to play that interview right now. It's, uh, you know, it's probably like 20, 25 minutes or whatever it is, but I'll give you some good background into what, uh, you know, he's trying to do, what the technology is that's inside of a structured light scanner. And a lot of this is applicable to many other types of scanners. It's just how they work. So I'm going to let it go there. Thanks for watching and enjoy the interview. Hey, Dr. Zhang. So uh, good morning and thank you for being here today. Uh, good morning, Eugene. <laughs> Thanks for <laughs> asking me to come here. All right. Hey, I want to ask you about your beginnings, and uh, and then we'll lead up to like some of the work that you're doing today with the scanner and footwear impressions and things like that. But um, before you were sort of doing this right now, um, you you I mean you're in mechanical engineering. So were you doing uh, computer vision stuff before, or what were you thinking? You know, when you first got started, what areas were you interested in? Yeah, so uh, I, I, I started this kind of 3D uh, imaging or metrology when I was in grade school. <laughs> so that okay. was more than 20 years ago. Uh, wow. So at that point, I tried to um, make a 3D like uh, um, imaging, um, you know, uh, system, you know, faster and accurate. So I tried to develop a real time 3D imaging technology at that uh, point. So by the time I graduated from, you know, by the time I closed the graduate, I actually probably developed the first uh, um, high resolution real time 3D image system in the world. Uh, so we can do uh, real time 3D capture at a camera pixel resolution. So that's where I studied this and uh, the forensic application just one of uh, the area I feel this 3D imaging uh, technology can be very beneficial. Okay, and so uh, as you were going through, um, were you, you were always focused on structured light scanning? I yeah. primarily focus on structured light scanning, um, uh, especially the technology we use something called a fringe projection. Uh, so um, just structured light scanning, you know, structured light uh, like technology is very broad. Uh, so the the special like area we are working on uh, the fringe projection gives us the speed, the resolution, accuracy. Uh, so we try to push the limit uh, for the for the speed and push the limit for the resolution, push the limit for the accuracy. So this uh, is the technology that can give the best uh, all of them. Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned like the the pattern though. though. So there are uh, some scanners that will use infrared light for mm -hmm. to project the pattern, like a laser light, and then there's mm -hmm. some that is just white light or visible light. And so, um, have you had experience with both of those? Uh, yes, I use both like infrared light and also the um, kind of you know laser light before. Uh, so the infrared light uh, it's not it's 
for the structural light technology, it's not actually about the, the light we, you know, what kind of light we use. It's actually about the camera. Uh, so if you use uh, go to the inf uh, infrared regime, uh, the, the camera uh, sensitivity is not great. You will not be able to get this uh, uh, best signal to noise ratio. So th that is the one of this uh, limb technique that going uh, to the infrared light. So laser light is a completely different story. So if we use laser light, uh, because of this, uh, uh, you know, coherent light, uh, it create a, a speckle, you know, noise, which is random noise. Uh, that limits the, you know, resolution we can achieve. So you can, in other words, if you use laser light, uh, you cannot get a, as a high resolution as using the white light or, you know, wide spectrum light in general. So that's pretty interesting because usually a lot of the metrology grade scanners, you'll see they're using visible light. So it, sometimes it's blue light or sometimes it's just regular light or whatever. So, um, so let's talk about the patterns then on a structure, like a white light scanner or whatever. So what kinds of different uh, techniques are people using for the projecting the pattern? So projecting pattern has so many different ways. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, if you see the um, uh, one of those kind of way they uh, put on the iPhone, you know, iPad, uh, those kind of um, tablet, uh, you know, computers. Um, they, of course, on that side they have multiple technology. I try to explain like one by one. So one of the technology they project like random dots, uh, array of dots. Uh, they use uh, like uh, optics called the uh, um, diffraction optics. Uh, so they put some gradient behind that they create a rev dots based on that. So very simple optics. Um, uh, so that technology can only create one single pattern. Uh, so because they use one single pattern, sparse like pattern, they cannot achieve high resolution. So the 3D resolution will not be higher than the density of the dots they project. Uh, so the, uh, the the same kind of along the same line, they used to have you know time flight, uh, you know technology as well, they use laser project these dots or project the area uh, of this uh, like uh, uh, coded light. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, um, another one way to create these uh, dots. Uh, so the other way to uh, kind of create dots, you do something kind of grating. So you put a physical grid and then you have light behind that, they create the one single like pattern. Uh, so the, uh, the third way, which is uh, the way I'm using, using like a digital technology. So, uh, you know, we can use digital technology to create like projectors, create dots, create, uh, um, you know, a structured uh, coded pattern the way we like. Uh, so this is more uh, widely used for high accuracy 3D, uh, like uh, uh, scanning uh, based on stretch light, um, because this is a project that gives us flexibility to create, uh, you know, the pattern more creatively. <laughs> so this gives us the opportunity to um, to optimize the algorithm so that we can achieve high, uh, higher resolution and higher accuracy. Okay, at the very heart of a structured light scanner, the basic components you need are gonna be, is is it basically just a projector and a a camera, something to yes. sense the, the light, yes. right? Yes, okay. exactly. So the and projector does not have to be the way we are seeing right now. So the projector, you know, we project 2D patterns, right? Uh, 2D like dots. But uh, I think in the in the field there were trend that they can create a much much simpler uh, like uh, projector, just a one D array, instead mm -hmm. of like a two D dots. So this is perfect fit to the stretch light scan uh, scanning technology since we just need a one D like pattern because it's a one D. Then you can do much much higher uh, you know resolution uh, because you you know just along one direction, and also because this is a one D projector, they can make the projector much much smaller. Okay. <laughs> so. So the size of the printer will be uh, will be smaller in the future, but this is still uh, at a development stage. Okay. And uh, what about like the pattern itself? Uh, sometimes I've seen like the the fringe pattern or, or whatever the phase pattern is sort of like long ways, or sometimes you can do it upright as well, or maybe you can mix them both. So what's what's the benefit of doing it one way versus the other way or both? So so uh, from my experience, um, one way is enough. <laughs> so if you design the system properly. Uh, you, you set up the optical system properly using one one dimension like a uh, rolling pattern or changing pattern is enough. Using two dimension, it uh, does not uh, provide additional like uh, uh, accuracy uh, from my experience so far. So it, in terms of whether you use the horizontal like or, or vertical like uh, patterns, it actually does not matter. It depends on what kind of uh, design you have. Uh, so you just yes. need a Wendy, um, depending on where you put the camera, where you put the projector, uh, so you, um, the, the basic principle behind that, you want to give this uh, biggest possible angle to create a triangulation and make system as compact as possible. So okay. uh, depending on design, so uh, either way would be fine. 
What about the, the number of patterns? Because I've seen before some systems will allow you to choose whether you have like uh, eight patterns or 20 patterns or 50 patterns. So yeah. what's, what's the benefit of having additional patterns? So the additional using more patterns, uh, in the, the drawback of that, the more pattern you use, the slower speed that you are capturing. Uh, so that is a drawback. Uh, but this uh, upside is that the uh, the more pattern you use, you will get a higher signal to noise ratio. So in other words, you will be able to get a better resolution. Assume that they design algorithm properly, right? So some people use a lot of patterns, may not be able to achieve this resolution. Uh, you know, suppose they can achieve. Uh, but if they do things properly, the more pattern, the better. Okay, and like when you're resolving a, when you're resolving the pattern, I mean, can you get down to like the pixel level of uh, of a point? Yeah, that's the uh, the, the the way I do. Uh, we use this is uh, you know fringe projection. Uh, so <laughs> if you do not use the fringe projection, uh, you will you you will not be able to achieve actually the camera pixel resolution. You may be able to achieve a projector pixel resolution. So the way we do uh, uh, the face shift, something called face shifting is that we can um, get the face instead of intensity, pixel by pixel at a camera resolution. So we, you know, in my lab, we were able to achieve, you know, um, one cam camera, you know, one projector pixel corresponding to more than 10 camera pixels. So we can use the lower resolution projector, we can get extremely high resolution 3D imaging if we put it in a, a high resolution camera. Right. So if you without this phase shifting, it, it's not possible. I see. Oh, interesting. And the um, the applications. I mean, uh, when did you first have the idea to start looking at footwear impressions or applying this to footwear impressions? <laughs> yeah, that was a kind of interesting uh, story. Uh, so uh, I before I you know I got his permission. I will not mention his name, right? So when I was uh, work at Iowa State, I used to work in the forensics uh, field for like. Uh, tool mark uh, examination. So, so it's kind of, uh, we try to, you know, uh, see how analyze 3 data based on this, uh, you know, 3D scanner, you know, um, the you know, tool marks. So I have, I have been working on that for a while before um, one of these colleagues at IO said, and uh, he saw my 3D imaging work and uh, he has been in the forensic field for, for his career. <laughs> <laughs> then he realized that, uh, you know, f the footwear, especially the tire track uh, capturing is very challenging uh, optically. Uh, so he said, you know, maybe, you know, the technology uh, you're working on can change the field. Uh, so that was back in 2013, I think. So that was a while ago. Then we wrote uh, like a proposal to uh, Department of Justice. Uh, so uh, they have, uh, you know, each year they have a call and other projects get funded. So <laughs> apparently they like the technology and uh, we uh, started working on, on this kind of um, field since then, about 2013, 2014. Okay, and you, and, and of course that developed into a, I, a prototype and actually I'm testing it. So part of this, I'm gonna show, you know, what it is that, how it kind of works on, on this prototype. But um, when did you first start working on the prototype uh, uh, model? So the, this after we get uh, like uh, the first round of uh, Department of Justice uh, like uh, project about two three you know we work on th about three years and uh, we actually uh, demonstrated the prototype, prototype system developing the lab for uh, you know at different conferences I I I I and also uh, um, IPTES uh, conference so we did the two workshops. And it looked like the community really like it. <laughs> so yeah. many uh, like examiners want to own the uh, 3D scanner because they feel like the 3D scanner is easier enough to use and it gives them the uh, the benefit uh, um, capturing like uh, uh, crime scene, uh, you know, inspector footwear uh, uh, and the uh, tire track like a uh, impression quickly. So at that point, uh, and, you know, certain department agencies they also want us to commercialize the technology. <laughs> so yes. then I try to uh, kind of see how can I do, can I do that. Uh, then, Fortunately, I have a friend and we, uh, you know, we secure investment and we started this uh, video optics. Uh, that was back in 2017, uh, 2018-ish. Okay, and uh, so at the moment right now, um, you're obviously, got, you probably send out some of these, the people are testing it, they're like doing some work with it or whatever. So what's your goal now in, in the short term with this particular scanner? So for this particular one, if we uh, kind of, uh, you know, the technology we develop, it's uh, people like it, right? We can easily uh, make the product right now. We have all this uh, 
pipeline everything over the year to make product available. Of course, this the the scanner you have right now. It's uh, you know it's a prototype, right? It's not like a product level. But uh, we we do have these OEMs uh, help us to do, uh, manufacture the hardware, and we just put the software in, and then uh, the product will be ready. <laughs> so oh, okay, yeah, this is the final stage of testing. We uh, did uh, enough for testing before. We actually put the product to your hands, for example. Uh, so, uh, so hopefully, you know, we make some last uh, last uh, minutes, like a last few twists, and then we can release the product. Okay. Um, in terms of the the actual unit itself, um, in yeah. terms of like the size and even like some of the spacing, um, the the projector to camera offset distance that's an yeah. that's an important part, yes. right? Can you tell me about the importance of that? Yeah, that is so important, and uh, for especially uh, if you want to achieve this kind of optimal performance. So essentially, there is a kind of balance between you know um, the angle, right? We want to do the triangle. How big the angle will be? You get this, uh, you know, uh, best possible resolution without uh, creating too much shadow. <laughs> so this is based on my kind of many many years like experience. We have some, um, you know. Some idea how to get achieve the best performance with the smallest possible footprint. So oh. I, I will not disclose it too much detail. That it's, <laughs> All right. It's, is there any you know um, uh, you mentioned in that area? Is is there any benefit to adding like additional cameras? Uh, from my from my experience, uh, it's it's not really. Uh, so adding more cameras will create more problems. Uh, from <laughs> so if you can do with one camera, and uh, certainly that'll be the best. Uh, from our testing so far, our one camera system can achieve the same resolution, same accuracy with a two camera system. Um, okay. Certainly, you know we have less like a shadow problem. And uh, why do we want to add the cost to another camera? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and in terms of validation, the uh, how do you how do you what's the calibration process between you know when you first get a unit? Like, what what kinds of things do you do to make sure that it's calibrated properly? So we 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 did a, we do this kind of internal like calibration uh, before we uh, kind of fabric system. The calibration process is quite uh, quite a complex. Uh, so typically, even for us takes about an hour or two to run the calibration through the calibration. So we fix everything inside of this, uh, this box. Uh, so nothing can move. And uh, this calibration uh, should last uh, for at least a couple of years. Oh, OK. Well, I know that the, the unit is fairly easy to use. Just a few buttons, which is nice. The simpler, the better, that's for sure. And it's fairly robust. I'm, I'm noticing it's, it's getting a lot of data, for example, on very dark soils or even uh, lighter soils. So one of the options on there, I believe, is HDR. And yes. you have this HDR option. So can you explain a little bit about what the, how the HDR works? Yeah, so this HDR is more or less like a, you know very similar to the two D camera HDR. So if the object uh, you know has a higher contrast, so use one single exposure, you will not be able to capture you know both the dark and the bright area. So HDR will capture multiple like exposure over the year. Then we fuse the data together, create a one single like a three D three uh, mesh. Of course, if this uh, you know if this scene right, it's already um, the contrast is not very high. And the single exposure will be enough, and you probably will not be able to see difference using the one single exposure or HDR. But once the contrast become uh, because uh, become bigger, uh, and you will be able to see the difference. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to be doing some more testing with it for sure. I've done a bunch already where we we're uh, comparing some different things in different soils or whatever, and I'm going to show some of that on the video here. So, uh, listen, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate uh, the input, and and I'm looking forward to seeing more of work and uh, more development in this area from yeah, you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Yeah, All thank you Bye -bye. so much for spending your time testing the the scanner. I, I hope this uh, you know technology will bring some benefit to the community. <laughs> I think it will. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it and I appreciate the opportunity too. So, all right, great. Okay, Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye. Now there is one last thing that I forgot to mention, and that is that there is in fact a viewer. So after you get the scans on the device, you can just export them to a USB and then import them on your desktop. And this is called the uh, XYZ T viewer, which I have up on my screen. And really all you need to do is just drag and drop scan. So let me grab one here. I don't know, there's a whole number of them here, but this is an example of one just like that. 
And you can do a few things here, um, you know, mirror, snapshot, save. There's some other things up here, like depending on the type of shading, point cloud, wireframe, and stuff like that. So if you want to get in and really see the wireframe, you know, we can do that here as well. You can rotate it around and view. So it's a pretty simple viewer, and I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I did want people to know. The other thing that I wanted to address here is the accuracy and that is something that depends on the mode. So if you're using the high res mode versus the low res mode, but um, you know, you can get up to about 80 micron and it just depends. Um, there are some other factors like the type of surface that you're scanning. If you have a very dark surface or a very wet surface or if there's something shiny or if you have sand with like little bits of glass or things that sort of sparkle or reflect, then that can cause little artifacts and things like that too. So it's sort of not a, a concrete answer. There's a little bit of gray there when it comes to accuracy, but this is a prototype. Uh, it's doing a pretty good job and you can kind of see, let me just zoom in here, you know, sort of the level of detail that you're getting. Uh, so it's quite promising. I, th I think there's some things here that uh, uh, could be quite useful in forensics when we're dealing with footprints and uh, shoe impressions and that sort of thing. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching the video. Uh, take care and hopefully we'll see you on the next one on Click3D. Bye-bye.